Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. Well, what we've been seeing over the course uh, of the last evening, this is an eruption that began at 10 p.m. You're right, no surprise at all. Authorities have been warning of this for more than a month. They'd seen that seismic swarm, as they call it, more than a thousand small earthquakes in a 24-hour period. Those evacuations had taken place from that town, that fishing town of Grindavik. Uh, 4,000 people evacuated in all. They had been allowed home during the day. Now they're being kept away. And you can see in those pictures already just how spectacular the scenes are there on the Reykjanes Peninsula in southwestern Iceland. Uh, that began at 10 p.m. yesterday. What we saw is that uh, fissure, the main crack emerged. It is now four kilometers long. And for a while, you were seeing 200 cubic meters of lava erupting, emerging from that crack every single second. So many hundreds overnight. What we're hearing, the very latest, though, is that Grindavik may yet be spared from the lava flows. We understand uh, from local authorities that they are now heading towards the north and east, and therefore away from the town itself. Uh, Icelandic authorities have said, obviously, uh, the uh, main priority here is to protect human lives, although infrastructure, of course, a crucial consideration as well. You just need to cast your mind back to 2010 and remember the chaos that was caused by the volcano erupting. There's no suggestion of that for now, this time. TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. It's been a long time coming. Newly FDA-approved therapies for sickle cell disease are shining a light of hope on a long-neglected illness. This is a huge thing. It's Dr. Beth Stanger with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta treats pediatric patients with sickle cell disease. The illness is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders, which causes the red blood cells to become hard and sticky and crescent in shape. Which then blocks um, blood vessels, um, particularly very small blood vessels all through the body, um, leading to painful episodes and, and organ damage over the lifetime of an individual with sickle cell disease. Up until now, the only cure for the disease has been a bone marrow or stem cell transplant, but it can be risky and doesn't always work. The new therapies take away the need for a donor. Kasjevi uses a technique to alter a patient's stem cells, while Lifgenia is a cell-based gene therapy using a gene delivery vehicle for genetic modification. Both of the clinical trials that um, led to, to these two products, FDA approval, showed um, dramatic decrease in the number of painful episodes that these patients are having. The new treatments won't make sickle cell go away. The hefty price tag and extensive hospital stay may not allow access to all. I think as with any kind of new and expensive thing in medicine, um, they do get cheaper and better over time. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They Former President Donald Trump is talking about undocumented immigrants in more extreme terms, echoing language used by white supremacists and promising unprecedented action if he's elected. It is only common sense that when I'm reelected, we will begin, and we have no choice, the largest deportation operation in American history. With just four weeks until the Iowa caucuses, the GOP frontrunner is leaning into rhetoric that has traces of Adolf Hitler's writings, foreigners poisoning the blood of a nation. But it's just among the themes the Trump campaign appears to be focusing on in the final weeks to Iowa and New Hampshire. Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. He's a threat. Over the weekend, Trump quoted Russian President Vladimir Putin approvingly to attack President Joe Biden. Vladimir Putin of Russia says that Biden's, and this is a quote, politically motivated persecution of his political rival is very good for Russia because it shows the rottenness of the American political system. The Biden campaign responded. Donald Trump channeled his role models as he parroted Adolf Hitler, praised Kim Jong-un, and quoted Vladimir Putin while running for president, 
on a promise to rule as a dictator and threaten American democracy. Trump's rhetoric, an evolution of his 2016 message on immigration. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. So far, no signs that such talk will have a negative impact on his standing with GOP voters, even as his Republican rivals campaign to stop his march to the nomination. We have to leave behind the chaos and drama of the past with a new generation and a new conservative president. Nikki Haley has been rising in new polling, with a new CBS YouGov survey showing her in a solid second place in New Hampshire at 29 percent, behind Trump's 44 percent among likely GOP primary voters. That same poll has DeSantis at second place, but in Iowa, behind the former president. DeSantis has been critical of Trump's recent rhetoric, saying it distracts from the real issues at the border. To give them an ability, the opposition an ability, to try to make it about something else with, with some of those comments, I just think it's just a tactical mistake. Follow The Advocate Channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. Outside any American immigration court these days, you'll likely find long lines, people gathering in the middle of the night for court appearances that will determine if they stay in the United States or if they'll be deported. They are lining up sometimes at 5 a.m. I've seen them lining up the night before as well. Some of these migrants will end up in Mimi Sankoff's New York City courtroom. Judge Sankoff is the president of the National Association of Immigration Judges. She's served as a judge for 17 years and has never seen the system under this intense strain. Some days I can see up to 100 different cases just in a morning. I've been a judge in Los Angeles, Colorado, and in New York City, and I've never seen the numbers that we're seeing right now. Now, for the first time, tracking data shows the immigration court backlog has reached more than 3 million cases. In 2012, there were over 325,000 backlog cases. Across the country, there are just 71 immigration courts and 734 immigration judges that handle this caseload. The states with the largest numbers of pending cases are Florida, Texas, California, and New York. Last December, we met Jason Virguez, his wife Zulema, and their two children as they crossed the Rio Grande into El Paso, Texas. Did you think reaching this point was going to be so emotional? With tears in their eyes, they told me they never thought the journey from Venezuela would be so painful. The family is now in New York, navigating the immigration asylum process. Their journey captures the dilemma of the overwhelmed system. It's been a year since we met you. You just had your first hearing in the court, correct? Están ocupados o cuando te contestan dice que te van a devolver la llamada y bueno. They say it, um, it's been very difficult to find an attorney. They, in fact, after a year, they still haven't been able to get an immigration attorney. The same tracking data shows close to 100 percent of the migrants who have lawyers show up to the court hearings. The data is less clear for migrants who don't have lawyers. Jason and Zulema attended their first court hearing last week and have another date set for April of next year. The Biden administration has added more than 300 immigration judges to help handle the massive backlog of cases. But Judge Senkoff also says there aren't enough interpreters and law clerks to move cases along. The focus has been on hiring more immigration judges, which makes sense. But you cannot hire your way out of this problem because even um, an immigration judge really can only handle maybe about 500 cases a year. Thanks for watching The Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.